when you're in the uh, tape recovery and archive business, you have to get a bit innovative. Like when you get a cassette format or a tape format that you don't necessarily have the correct machine to play it back on. Today I received this micro cassette, which is basically from back in the 80s. They used these in dictation machines, even in, probably into the 90s. This was just a, an analog cassette and it was used by dictation machines. I have a client that would like this transcribed onto a CD. The problem is, I don't have a machine to play this. They don't have a machine to play it, but there is a way to play it, and I just happen to have a machine that can do just that. I have an old Panasonic fax machine. This Panasonic fax machine features a micro cassette recorder. So we can take this tape, we can put it into the micro cassette, and we can play it back. Just like that. Small problem though. It's going to play out the speaker. And that's not necessarily going to give me the best quality. So, I need to be able to get this deck to play into my computer so that I can digitize this tape and give it to them on a CD. And that's the purpose of this video. We're going to open up this machine. We're going to attach a line out cable. In this case, it'll be just going to the speaker. We'll use a little bypass capacitor in there to isolate the speaker circuitry from the line in. We'll put an RCA plug on there like this so that we can plug this into our system and copy it onto a tape or copy it onto a computer. In this case, I'm going to copy it onto my PC and then burn a CD from them. So that's what this video we're going to do. We're going to take this fax machine apart. This will work with any fax machine. This particular one is just an old Panasonic unit. This is, I mean, this fax machine still works. We'll maybe do a video on this sometime on how to overhaul one of these machines. I know that they're not used much these days. I have a couple of old ones that I have just kicking around for the odd time that I have to send fax, which is once in a blue moon, but um, occasionally I'll have a, a document, like insurance papers or something that... Uh, they want a hard copy and uh, rather than scan it on my computer and send it over, I just plug it in the fax machine and fax it over to them. So anyway, we're going to take this thing apart and we're going to connect an auxiliary output for the purpose of transferring this tape. Now working on one of these old school Panasonic machines, it's easier said than done. We actually have to remove the bottom of the machine because we need to take the cover off on the inside of the top. And the way to get at that is we actually have to remove the bottom. I mean, it's, uh, these things were not the easiest things in the world to service. But we'll start out by removing the screws from the bottom of the unit. Now this is one of these old machines. This one actually has a, a green fluorescent light in here for the scanner. They uh, went to LED light on later generations but this one actually uses a, a, a fluorescent a bright green fluorescent tube which is mirrored on the inside on one half of the tube so that light is all directed through the tube and out the clear side. It's kind of a unique little tube. I've changed a few of them that's how I know what they're like. There's a little wire here you have to undo that's for the switch hook for the phone and you have to take out the the uh, handset plug and then if we release the door the bottom should actually we have to take turn it over here we got to open this up we got to take this back piece out first that's the first piece that comes out on here and then we'll take the paper out of this use the good old thermal roll paper Here's the, this is the this is the roller for the thermal printer with this one-way clutch and gears. These gears were quite often would break on these things. It was quite unique when these things operated. It was a, the motor went two directions. When the motor turned one direction, a, a one-way clutch would turn this roller, which would pull the paper through for scanning. You see, and the motor reversed and went the other direction. This, this one would freewheel and not move, and it would turn this roller to print. So that way, one motor could operate both the scanner by turning one direction or operate the printer by turning the other. Neat, huh? 
I like these old. These these old ones were really a good unit. Um, these machines, when they were new, this machine was probably twenty five hundred bucks. Very expensive uh, machines. We gotta, I think we got to pull this thing out. If I'm not mistaken, we have to pull out the. We have to pull out the catch release for the for the um, cover. If I'm not mistaken. That just lifts out like that. And then we can lift the bottom cover off. I'm pretty sure. I think there's any more screws. Yeah, the bottom cover should just lift straight off, kind of like this. There we go. Bottom cover off. There's a ground wire on here. We don't need to actually go into any of this stuff here. I just need the bottom cover off because I have to take a couple of screws out. I have to take out these screws here. These are what limits how far the door can open so that I can get the cover off. So we'll start by just removing these locking screws. There's one on each side. They are a special screw. They only are threaded part way. You'll see in a minute why I have to do this. This one looks like at some point this connector was resoldered. If you look down here, that might have been what went wrong with this thing when it was given to me. Was it, that had to be resoldered. That was also quite a common problem on these machines throughout the years. And I fixed my fair share of these. These are always a they're always a high dollar item to fix because they were generally used by businesses that. To, depended on them and if their fax machine went down it was like the world was coming to an end now we can open this up all the way you see what I was doing there that's the reason I had to take the bottom cover off I needed to take those screws out so that I could lay this piece back because I actually have to get into here just so I can tap on to the speaker wires I'm just going to solder a, a couple wires on there and we'll bring it out the back here somehow and uh, that way I can use that for um, making a copy of that tape so to get into this, I'm going to have to remove a bunch more screws down the side here. Take out these rails first of all. Actually, I may not even have to take those ones out. Yes, I do. I gotta take this one here out. If I don't have to take this whole plate out, I won't. I just want to be able to get in just enough that I can solder the wires and I don't necessarily want to take this whole unit apart, but I'm going to start by removing some of these screws here. The light is underneath here for the scanner. And here's the white background for the scanner assembly. Be careful, don't touch the print head on these units with anything uh, sharp or metal because it will damage it. It's a, it's a thermal print head. We should be able to remove this cover. At least enough to get in there with the solid iron on this side. As long as I can get at the terminals here, which I can, right down inside here, I should be able to solder a wire onto there now without actually having to lift this up anymore because I can get into here. So let me prep my, uh, let me prep the audio cable I'm going to attach to this. Whenever I've made a custom cable for something and I cut an audio cable in half, I always keep the other half because you never know when it's going to come in handy. And this is just one of those instances where I can now take the second half of the cable that I used before for another project and I can open this up and connect this up to this unit and use this as my audio out cable. I can even put both of them together so I have a stereo output. Even though this is a mono machine, I can put it into both channels on my uh, recorder. 
Now, picking a bypass capacitor is really all about not that critical on this because the only reason that we're using this is just for blocking any DC that may be, uh, there won't be any DC on the speaker anyway because we're not removing the speaker. The speaker's still going to remain in the circuit. But we just want to kind of isolate electrically our, our new line out from the actual circuitry on this. So a little capacitor, in this case I'm using a little 10 microfarad cap. That'll be more than enough. Is that a 10? Uh, yeah, that's a 10. 10 microfarads is all I'm going to use. That'll be more than enough to provide me with isolation from the low impedance output from the amplifier here to the high impedance input on my input, my line input on my uh, either my computer or through my amplifier. So we'll solder this up and we'll attach some wires and hook them up to the speaker. So we'll just solder. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder onto the speaker terminals here. And there's my iron. I just got this propped open with a piece of a screwdriver holding this open. So we'll just get in here. Let's get some light in there so I can see what I'm doing. That's a little better. Okay. We'll just heat the terminals up here a bit. Apply some fresh solder to the Bigger terminals. There we go, that should hold it. There we go, and then the other side, the ground wire, let's get that in place here. Hot, 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 burning myself. Okay, we're in place, we're connected. Just put the little capacitor down out of the way, and now we just gotta figure out how we can uh, route this wire out so that it's not going to be in the way of anything and it just so happens that there's a perfect little spot right here that that wire can come out through look at that excellent that was actually for the um, paper holder there was a little a little uh, wire bale holder that went on here to catch your your faxes as they as they uh, came through it would hold the uh, it would hold the paper not that this thing had a sheet cutter or anything on it so but that's what it would do. It would hold the paper in place. So now we can put these screws back in and reassemble this unit. Okay, that's got the screws back in. Now we can reassemble this unit. So we just close it back up by closing it down and locking it in place. Next goes back on the bottom cover. Notice the grounding wires. There's two of them here. Back in the days when these things were still relatively new, there was so much concern about digital devices causing interference that everything was very extremely well shielded. We got the base reseated again with the volume control now is working. We can reconnect the connector for the switch hook. Like that, and then slides in place, and there's a screw that holds it in place. We put our opening catch back in here, and the three remaining screws, and this unit should be ready for a test.
I thought I smelled something burning in here, and then I realized that my uh, my soldering iron dropped out of its holder. It was melting plastic. I was like, what is that stink? And my uh, iron had dropped out of its holder and was lying on the base here, melting it on the bottom. Okay, we've got this thing plugged in. I've got this plugged into my, I'm just using one of these cords to patch it through. Got it plugged into my input on my, on my uh, amplifier. And we'll play it back here. That's the speaker here. And... Again, it's in the saddle in the township of Mornington. Now we can turn it down. Because we don't need a lot of gain. On a hundred acre farm. There we go. Near the village. We have it beside the village of Newton on the seventh. So this obviously this tape is uh, somebody's uh, story. They've got a family history or something. It's of importance to them, and they want to have this put onto a uh, onto a CD. That is how you can take an old fax machine and convert it over so that you can play back these micro cassettes and make a copy of it. The machine can always play it back, but I mean, sure, I could stuck a microphone on there, but the quality is not going to be very good. This way I can get much better quality, take it right over to a CD and make my client happy. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one.